Hello everybody, uh, this is a uh, video lesson which talks about uh, development in deserts. Uh, you'll know from our first lesson uh, last week, uh, we did about the location of deserts and we looked at how plants and animals adapt to those difficult, dry, hostile conditions. Now it isn't just plants and animals that need to adapt of course, it is also people. Um, many people live in desert environments around the world and the group that we're going to be looking at in today's lesson is a group called the San Bushmen. Um, so the first thing for you to do in your exercise books is to put the title uh, Development in Deserts, Lesson 2, Life of the San Bushmen. So if you could put that as a title, uh, what I'd recommend is as the various tasks um, are uh, given at different points in this video lesson. Uh, if you could maybe pause the video uh, and then obviously it allows you to do the tasks that are set. Okay, so natural question then, uh, who are the San Bushmen? Well, the, the picture on the left that you can see on your screen uh, shows the San Bushmen of the Kalahari Desert, that is in uh, Southern Africa. And uh, the San are a nomadic tribe. What that means is that they don't have a fixed uh, abode. They uh, move from place to place. And uh, there's a fairly obvious reason why they've got to move from place to place. And that is because um, the resources don't necessarily exist for them to stay in one particular place uh, for very long. Uh, they've got to move uh, in search of, of animals, food, uh, the hunter-gatherers, which mean that they uh, move around trying to hunt animals, but also gather uh, berries. Uh, and, and other types of, uh, of sort of food and vegetable uh, as they forage. Now the picture is very revealing on the left hand side because you can see uh, there is a, a person here who is actually uh, not kissing an ostrich egg, they're actually drinking from the ostrich egg uh, because once they've actually eaten uh, the actual egg yolk and white with inside it, um, they actually will ensure that it's been opened very very carefully so there's just a small opening and then they will fill that with water. Uh, they actually then seal up the top of the egg uh, with a sort of a type of mud uh, cement, which hardens. They can then bury these under the ground in different places, which they'll mark out. And whenever they're desperate for water, they'll know that there is a, an available store. Uh, so that's one way. You can see equally, there is a, um, a gentleman here who his hand is reaching down to the bottom of this particular type of plant. This plant is called uh, a tuber. And the tuba uh, is very clever, really, how they can work this out, because the tuba has a certain type of leaf, um, which makes it distinguishable from other plants uh, to the sand people. We wouldn't know the difference if we were looking at them, I wouldn't have thought. Um, and then they actually dig a huge pit around the bottom of this tuba, because in the actual roots, um, it's a very bulbous uh, root, a bit like a huge, gigantic light bulb. And uh, when they actually squeeze it out, large amounts of water come from it. Now the third type of technique on there, um, you can see somebody's hand reaching out there, is a fire drill. They use a piece of wood and this uh, piece of wood um, they actually will turn around rapidly into a wooden base and the uh, motion of doing that very quickly creates friction and it's a traditional way of generating fire. Uh, something that isn't shown on there, they also sometimes will get a hollowed out reed and they will actually position it in certain parts of the desert sand. Water will then gather around it and they use it almost like a drinking straw. Uh, and that's called a sip well. So there's four techniques I've mentioned there uh, which demonstrate straight away um, how the San people manage to survive. But there are a whole host of other things that they do. Now your uh, first proper task here is to watch two videos. Uh, they both last around about 10 to 12 minutes, so this will take just over 20 minutes for you to do. Uh, the videos are linked through Show My Homework as well, so you're not having to, to type this into your browser. You can just click on the available links in Show My Homework. The first one talks about their cultures. The second one talks about some of the challenges where they are being forced away from their land. Uh, so if you could now please uh, watch those two video clips. Okay, now you've uh, watched those two video clips, hopefully you'll feel a, a bit better uh, informed about uh, what the San people are like and what the conditions are like where they live. Uh, we now have a task where we need to read the following text and I will read through it at the same time. So it says, today the San suffer from a perception that their lifestyle is primitive and that they need to be made to live like the majority cattle herding tribes. Specific problems vary according to where they live. In South Africa, for example, the Komani tribe now have most of their land rights recognised, but many other San tribes have no land rights at all. Few modern San 
are able to continue as hunter-gatherers and most live at the very bottom of the social scale in unacceptable conditions of poverty, leading to alcoholism, violence, prostitution, disease and despair. The last of the hunter-gatherers were forcibly evicted from the central Kalahari game reserve as recently as April 2002 by the Botswana government to make way for diamond mines. A court case is currently in existence to help the San claim their land. The official reason was to provide them with services such as schools and medical services and to bring them into modern society. In fact, few of these services have materialised and the San have been confined to bleak encampments in a hostile environment. The San are a friendly, creative and peaceful people who never developed any weapons of war and have lived in harmony with their natural environment for at least 20,000 years. Properly restored to their ancestral lands and reintegrated into the game reserves of Southern Africa, San communities could become self-sustaining. Now I think what this um, small article demonstrates is that uh, the ability of the San people to live those traditional lives is coming under increasing pressure from the wider world uh, and we'd probably say unacceptable pressure because as the videos that you've watched demonstrate uh, the sand people are sustainable and they've used these methods very effectively in a way that I think a lot of us could actually learn from. Now there is a written task uh, coming up uh, but first um, a bit of a summary of some of the things you've learnt on uh, desert so far including the sand people uh, through a poem that I wrote a number of years ago called hot deserts. Motionless, tinder dry, bait ground, clear sky, vegetation sparse and little, life that's fragile, always brittle. Cactus solely standing there, on the ground so hard and bare. How do you remain alive? Where do you find the will to survive? Your roots tapping, but without sound, stretching deep and underground. Reaching water down below, never fast, always slow. Thick and waxy, juicy skin, meant to keep the water in. Sharp and spiky, I would say, to deter unwanted prey. Desert sands, hot to the touch, nothing likes you very much. Snakes and lizards slide on past, across the dunes, yellow, vast. In the Kalahari, the bushmen, San, have survival tips. Do what they can, to use the land to make ends meet, despite the sapping, persistent heat. The sip well, a long hollowed out reed, gives them water that they need. They push it through the sandy floor, then suck water through their straw. The tuba, a plant, is bulbous and round and sits quite happily underground. How did the sand know that it's there? Perhaps by its dark green shoots of hair, which sit on the surface, wild and free, but they'd just be weeds to you and me. The antelope, an elegant beast, is the sand's best chance of a wholesome feast. A poison-tipped dart is sharpened and readied. The hunter's hand is strong and steady. He shoots, he strikes, he collects the prey to help the sand through another day. None of the antelope is left alone. Its meat, its skin and even its bones are used to make a pouch or bag, a weapon, a cloth or even a rag. The sand have learnt not to act in haste. In this unforgiving desert, nothing is waste. Desert, foreign, no water flowing never shrinking, forever growing. Now onto your writing task. Hopefully you've learnt plenty about the uh, sand people and how they managed to survive in such hostile conditions. Uh, so your writing task, and if you could write this down as your title, uh, the uh, question is, who are the sand bushmen and how has life changed for them? Now in terms of how you actually structure this, um, your aim, or the aim here, is to assess your understanding of the culture of the sand bushmen and the changes that are happening to them over time. And I would like you to try and use three peel paragraphs. Now, the aim here, peel, is uh, you make your point, then try and give them some evidence to back up your point, explain that evidence, and link it to this question about um, who they are and how life is actually changing. And uh, the things to include, there are three paragraphs here I'd like you to do. So the first paragraph should be focusing on who the sand bushmen are, where they actually live, and what their traditional life is like for them and how it's different to ours. So for instance, you'll know if you want a drink, you just head across to the tap uh, and turn it on. It's a bit more complex for them. 
Second paragraph should focus on how life has changed and why it is changing. And then the final paragraph, in terms of your conclusion, what do you think, from your perspective, the future might hold for the sand bushmen based on the information uh, that you've presented? Okay, so uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this lesson and found it productive and I will look forward to seeing your responses. Uh, I would like those, please, uh, if you were just going to write them in your books, uh, if you could just upload them onto Show My Homework for me to look over, that would be fantastic. Or equally, if you want to do this in a Word document uh, and upload it, uh, perhaps see if, if you could send it as a, as a PDF if that's possible. Uh, if not, a Word document would be absolutely fine. So I'll look forward to those uh, and thank you very much for now.